Hey guys, and welcome to another In Depth. So today I'm going to talk about something that I have, I don't want to say gotten over because it's still going to happen, but I used to suffer with very badly, which is panic attacks. Now I know there are a lot of people out there who suffer with them, um, and this is just a bit of kind of my experience with them and things that I find helpful when I have them. Uh, this is triggered because I saw a post, uh, someone on my Twitter shared a picture from Tumblr and I had actually seen it on Tumblr before as well, um, about how to calm someone when they're having a panic attack and it was scary because this advice is not brilliant advice and the fact that people are going to be kind of watching this or reading this what's the point and then going oh I know how to deal with it it's fine is is just scary so what they have put is step one wrap your arms tightly around them kind of like a hug uh, it triggers a hormone in the brain and calms them note they may resist but they will relax into your arms at some point step two if you hum or whisper softly the vibrations against their bodies will soothe them Step three, tell them it's going to be okay. So, I read these out to Rafe Paul uh, yesterday, and like his initial response was, but they're all wrong. And the, it's true, like, this may work for some people, but trust me, like, the majority of people I know have had panic attacks, you even touch them like they are gonna hate it so i'm gonna go through why this step program would be bad for me because i can only really comment on my personal experiences and the information i've gotten from the other people around me who suffer with panic attacks this video is never going to be a be, an, be all end all cover everyone in the spectrum because everyone is an individual and everyone is different so step one wrap your arms tightly around them kind of like a hug it triggers a hormone in the brain that calms them okay yes hugs do trigger hormones in the brain it's true that's why when you hug someone it feels nice um but if someone's hyperventilating bear hugging them is a bad idea like a big bad idea because if you put your arms around someone who is panicking like it said, they're going to resist because they're panicking. Your brain doesn't always think rationally when you're having a panic attack. I know mine doesn't. So if someone suddenly comes up and grabs me, I'm either going to fight back instinctually and you're going to end up with like a broken nose or I'm going to panic even more. My hyperventilation is going to go through the roof and I'm going to pass out. So like, I don't even like being touched when I'm having a panic attack. I don't like people near me, especially as mine are caused by social anxieties. So having people near me, even people I trust, is like, no, I don't like it. I don't want it. So if you wrap your arms around me when that's happening, that is the worst possible thing you could ever do. Step two, if you hum and whisper softly, the vibrations against their bodies will soothe them. This works for babies. Like, it's been proven to work for babies. This so much doesn't work for me. If someone's hugging me and is humming, like, in my ear, it's freaking annoying. Now, thankfully, no one's done it during a panic attack, considering how annoying I find it in real life, like, in normal general situations. If someone is humming or whispering softly in my ear, especially if it's nonsense, which it probably will be, Especially if it's going to be things like step three, going, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Because that is patronising as hell. Like, I know it's going to be okay. It's only a panic attack. Logically, I know this. I've had plenty of them. But telling me it's going to be okay and essentially treating me like a child is just going to make me angry. And then, again, I'm more likely to have a negative effect than a positive one. So, yeah, I have real issues with this post, mainly for step one, because it's so dangerous. Um, for my personal experiences, 
and this will definitely change so if you know someone in your life that suffers with panic attacks talk to them that is my best advice talk to them about it because if you turn around and say okay if you have a panic attack like what what is the worst thing i could do so i don't do it and what is the best thing i can do so i can help and more often than not like it will just be like just leave me to it just let me have my panic attack occasionally it'll be something like um if my panic attacks are in public i would want um rafe to get me somewhere that i felt safe amusingly that's my local games workshop <laughs> um but i'd want to be somewhere that i felt safe and that I was around away from the crowds so he like knows to direct me to a quiet area so i can just have that panic attack where i'm not in front of tons and tons of people and like after they've had it don't be like oh it's going to be okay it's you know it's just a panic attack it's gonna be okay literally Rafe was just like you're right yeah i'm good now can i go get a mcdonald's that kind of thing like comfort food is, is great after a panic attack or can, can we go home now is another is another frequent one after my panic attacks because my panic attacks are nearly always around people um but yeah talk to them some people may or will i guarantee there'll be people who respond differently to panic attacks to me so there'll be people who might be like if you could just put your hand lightly on my back and just rub my back because i know some people like that works for if they've got nausea and things and it they may find that it helps with panic attacks as well but you're not going to know unless you ask for god's sake never try hugging a stranger who's having a panic attack either because they don't know you that is not going to help and a lot of the responses are triggered by what's caused the panic attack to start with so if like me it's caused by social anxiety like i've said having people suddenly turn around and start hugging me or touching me is like the worst possible thing because i didn't want to be in that situation to start with um if their panic attack is brought on by balloons then probably the best thing you can do is get the balloons away from them but it's that kind of thing you need to know what causes or triggers their panic attacks to start with in order to create an appropriate response that might actually help them so yeah this is this is a ranty video <laughs> i totally get that but it was necessary because people take a lot of what they read to heart um, they kind of see it then it's in black and white and they don't think about who might have written it and who who it was intended towards because they might have someone in their life that has panic attacks and that is exactly the way they need to be treated to calm down um but please take it as, as read that not everyone and the vast majority of people i know who suffer with panic attacks that is the worst thing to do i definitely don't recommend the hugging thing and for God's sake, if someone's resisting you, there's a reason. There's a definite reason. If I'm trying to get away from you, I've you better believe that I've got like a solid concrete thought in my head that I know exactly why I need to get away from you. Um But yeah, and more often than not, the panic attacks will pass. And they will pass without any harm or detriment to the person having them. It's an unpleasant and horrible feeling and you'll be very self-conscious and you will be on edge and you'll want to get to somewhere where you feel safe. But, you know, touch wood, 90% um, of the time panic attacks happen without incident. So putting them in a situation that then could potentially be dangerous to them bad idea i mean if someone's having a panic attack with a knife in their hand please by all means remove that knife because if they're shaking and hyperventilating they might have an accident i'm not saying don't touch them in that scenario if they're at a point where they might endanger themselves fine interject if there's something sharp nearby and you want to get them away from it or if they're like if they're standing on a wall when they happen to have this panic attack even a little one if you want to try and safely get them down brilliant but don't force them to do anything they don't want to and don't like rugby tackle them <laughs> because it will only end badly um 
so yeah, that's that's my ranch drug advice. So for anyone having or who suffers with panic attacks, let people who you are out and about with when your panic attacks most are most likely to happen, let them know the do's and don'ts of kind of what to do if they have one. If the brown paper bag method works for you, brilliant, do that. Like, tell them they need to go get a paper bag so you can breathe into it, or they need to get you somewhere where there's no people, or they need to make sure that you're out of harm's way. Um, or if the hug thing works, then let them know that that works, or stroking your hair, or don't touch you entirely. Just let them know what works for you, because that is the best way to make sure that while as unpleasant as the panic attack is going to be, you in the back of your mind know that there is some form of support there. So even if it doesn't help while the panic attack is happening, you've got that support for when you come out of it. If you know someone who suffers with panic attacks or any anxiety related kind of issues, then talk to them. That is the best thing. Talk to them and find out what they need, what helps, what not to do. Honestly, communication is one of the most important things with mental health because that is one of the things that humans seem to have a real breakdown with is they don't know how to communicate with one another and they act on impulse. It's natural to act on impulse. If you see someone throwing up, you're instinctively going to go get them a bucket or you're going to rub their back or move their hair out of their face. It's one of those things you're instinctively going to do. And again, with panic attacks, people instinctively want to reach out and try and calm you. So you've just got to find out what works best for the person you are with. And the other top tip I've got, if someone's having a panic attack and you didn't know that they suffered with them, if they had them, what triggered it, stay calm. There's nothing worse than when you're having a panic attack and you're struggling to control your own body, your own emotions, that the person next to you starts freaking out, going, oh my god, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Because that makes the person having the attack, like, feel so much worse. So yeah, stay calm. It, it will pass. It might not be pleasant to watch. And this goes with anything. Um, like with my mum's epilepsy, I've seen so many reactions to her having a seizure. So many. Some know what to do. They know to stay calm. They, they know how to help. Um, I know what to do. I know I need to stay calm. I need to have a drink of water for her when she comes out of it to talk to her make sure you know she doesn't hurt herself or anything and then there's the opposite side of the coin where people just freak out they immediately freak out they call the ambulance they're panicking and like panic is the worst thing it really is if you stay calm you're more likely to get through any situation and that's true in all levels of life so yeah i apologize as this was a bit of a ranty video if you do have any opinions or any comments positive or negative as always please leave them below i do read them all and if you want to keep up to date on what i'm doing with regards to my depression and social anxiety with the in-depths with my more geeky stuff then please feel free to hit that subscribe button and till next time i hope you have an awesome day and i'll see you all soon Bye bye